Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning in this in our continuing series of webinars about the NUCA system of care here at South Central Foundation. Today's webinar is entitled Understanding Baldrige Criteria for Performance Excellence. This is part of our quality management series. And we are, have two um, presenters today, Melanie Binion and Janet Sweeney. They'll be introducing themselves more in just a bit. My name is Gil Prickett and I will be your moderator today. We want to make this as interactive an experience as possible. And we have a couple of different ways that we're doing that. The first one is using the built-in question and answer function in MediaSite, which is the uh, website through which you're participating in the webinar right now. If you look at the bottom of your screen in the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice a little text bubble. If you can click on that text bubble, that'll open up a, a dialog box that you can enter your name, um, a, a message, and then you can send that to me. And I'll respond to that as a moderator. That'll pop up right here on my computer, and I'll be able to answer those questions or pass them along to our presenters to, a to answer. Um, and so if you want to test that out right now, please feel free to do so. Another tool that we have that we really like using because it gives us a chance to get instant feedback from our participants is something called Mentimeter. Mentimeter is a polling site that allows you to respond to polling questions and we can get real-time input from all of our participants around the world. If you go to www.menti.com and click on the or enter the code 467639 it'll take you to the polling uh, site for this webinar. What we'd like you to do is to take a couple of moments right now and practice that. You can use that on your mobile phone, that works really easily, or you can use this on your computer. Either way, go to menti.com and use the code 467639 and tell us who you are, um, where you're from, and what you do. And we've already got some responses, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So we have Don from Las Vegas, who's in training. Thank you, Don, for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Rick from New Jersey, who's a physician. We're glad to have you with us. Terry, who's in quality improvement from Canada. I was just in Canada a couple of months ago and had a fantastic time. Uh, Tara from Chicago, um, who's an RN and a clinical manager. Bonnie from Idaho, who's another RN. Jamie from California, and who works with strategic improvement uh, for their t their company. Great, I think this will be a really useful um, uh, webinar for you. Uh, Ronald from Victoria, BC in Human Resources, and Dorcas from San Francisco, who's another RN. So we have several nurses with us today, that's great. We're really glad you're all joining us, um, and we really look forward to working with you today and helping to share with you some of the information that we've learned and some of the lessons we've learned about uh, meeting Baldrige criteria and how we've applied those in the NUCA system of care here at South Central Foundation. That being said, I'm going to turn this over to our presenters now. Thank you, Gil. Welcome and thanks for joining us today. My name is Janet Sweeney. I'm an improvement advisor here at South Central Foundation. I've been with SCF for about three years and doing improvement in healthcare for the last six years. Uh, I was first introduced to process improvement uh, methodologies in the early 2000s. Thanks, yeah. Janet. My name is Melanie Binion. I'm a Senior Improvement Advisor here with South Central Foundation's Organizational Development Department. I've been with South Central Foundation for 20 years. 18 and a half of those years have been with our Medical Services Division, and the last eight, year and a half has been with our Behavioral Health Division. So I'm going to start out by sharing with you a little bit about South Central. And so I'm going to share with you our vision and mission. Our vision is a Native community that enjoys physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual wellness. Our mission is working together with the Native community to achieve wellness through health and related services. Our goals actually spell out SCF. The S stands for shared responsibility, C is commitment, for, commitment to quality, and F is for family wellness. We actually have a fourth operational goal, and that's operational excellence. Customer ownership is key to our organization. In the late 90s, the tribal health organizations across the state took on their own health care from the Indian Health Service, 
and we changed everything that we do in regards to delivery of health care, but also the language that we use as an organization. So in most cases, in your healthcare system, you most likely refer to the people that you serve as patients. We've referred to them as customer owners. I am Alaska Native, I'm Aleut descent, and I am a customer owner of our healthcare system. We are key in regards to this um, language in that we are customer owner driven and data driven as an organization. Another key uh, principle is our operational principles, and that spells out relationships. And this is also a key element of our, uh, of our NUCA system of care. We are big about building relationships, not only with each other as coworkers, but also in relationship with our customer owners. So everything that we do as an organization, when we think about our opportunities for improvement, or think about our projects or things that we want to do as an organization, we have to be aligned, not only with our mission and vision, but also our corporate goals and our operational principles. If anything is not aligned with this, we have to question ourselves, why are we doing it? Is it a benefit to our customer owners? Is it uh, something that needs to happen? Is it regulatory? Sometimes regulatory things have to be done, right? So we have to do those things. But if it's not aligned, then we have to question ourselves, why are we doing it and, and potentially not move forward with it? Next is our SCF leadership principles, and this spells out ownership. And this is what we as leaders in the organization need to own and operate throughout the organization. And are we operating on the strength of our Alaska Native people, on the cultures and the traditions of leadership? Are we willing to stand in the gap and, and achieve the, our mission and vision as an organization? And making sure that we respect one, each, one another and also helping each other grow and share and listen to our stories. Um, again, that's key to our organization. And that's part of what we call core concepts. Core concepts is actually a three-day mandatory training that all of our staff have to attend that is led by our president CEO and our vice president team. And we have another acronym to throw in there and that's wellness. And we want to ensure that we are working together in relationship as I shared with you earlier. But core concepts te teaches us how to share story and how to receive story so that when we are checking in or working with each other, we are able to listen with an open mind and be able to respond appropriately to one another. So it teaches us communication tools and how to move through that process. So our learning objectives today is to share with you the Baldrige framework, discuss how we at Sasquatch Foundation, um, our application process and the Baldrige feedback report, and recognize how the Baldrige process impacts us at, through our strategic planning process. And with that, I'm gonna turn that over to Janet. Great, thanks Mel. So why would companies want to use, or organizations want to use the Baldridge framework? Um, it, there really is a lot of effort involved in using the framework, but it has a lot of benefits. The primary reason we hear is for the rich feedback and the opportunity to improve. Some things specific to South Central Foundation is they were an organization that was expanding rapidly, and um, the framework provides a great focusing tool and uh, structure to help navigate mm -hmm. that. The other thing, um, as Mel just shared with you, the operational principles and our core concepts, the core values and concepts of the Baldridge framework align nicely with South Central Foundation's um, existing principles. The Baldridge program was established in the late 80s, and it really was in response to a concern with the decline of competitiveness of U.S. businesses and organizations. Uh, so some research was done, uh, top performing organizations were studied, the research was uh, accumulated into what we now know as the Baldridge Criteria. The criteria has universal application across many sectors. It did start in manufacturing and services, but they have rolled the, pro the program out is now available for small businesses, education, healthcare, nonprofit, and most recently government. So while the core values and concepts and the criteria has universal application, there are some minor tweaks by sector. So in manufacturing and services, you may hear referred to customers, in education, students, and in healthcare, patients. Um, in our case at South Central Foundation, as Mel had mentioned, we continue to mm -hmm. refer to our patients as customer owners. So the criteria is a, a standard by which we can do an evaluation or assessment, and that is at the heart of the Baldridge framework. There is approximately 350 some questions in the criteria. Um, and not to scare you in a way, it is uh, segmented and it's set up as a way to help 
organizations navigate from where they are to uh, future improved performance. And ultimately that is what the criteria is about, is helping organizations improve. It also helps communicate best practices and is a tool for an organization to better understand their organization. So I wanna talk a little bit more about the criteria. There's uh, seven categories. And again, I mentioned those 350 questions, they're spread across seven categories. The first six categories are process categories. It's leadership, strategy, customers, measurement, analysis, and knowledge management, workforce, and operations. The final seventh category is all about results. The organizational, organizational profile encompasses all of those categories, and the criteria is built upon a common set of core values and concepts. So a little bit more about the core values and concepts. As Mally mentioned earlier, our NUCA system of care is designed with our customer owners at heart, but it also is a systems perspective. Yeah. And at the heart of the core values and concepts of the Baldridge framework is also a systems perspective. When we look at the next layer out, the dark purple ring, we see that several of those core values also align nicely with our operational principles and our core concepts. So here's another way to look at the framework. Uh, it aligns the six process categories with the five subsections of the results category. So each of the categories with the exception of number four has a specific set of results. Uh, this diagram also includes two other key pieces to the framework, evaluation and feedback. And as I mentioned earlier, that is one of the key reasons organizations mm -hmm. pursue Baldridge is the feedback is so rich. The evaluation, we'll learn a little bit more about two tools. There's a tool called ADLI, which is an acronym for approach, deployment, learning and integration. And for res evaluating results, let's see. We'll be looking for levels, trends, comparisons, and integration. The last portion is the feedback. And that is the, the report that we all get real excited <laughs> about here at SCF um, as we've gone through the application process multiple times. Uh, the strengths are usually when we have presence of ADLI or let's see and the opportunities for improvement are often when we do not have those present in our processes and results. So we've been talking a little bit about the criteria and that it is a lot of questions. Uh, here's just a snapshot of, from the Baldridge Excellence Builder. This is a document that you can get online uh, at NIST, which is the National Institute of Science Standards and Technology. And, uh, I love this because it shows, this is just category two, and it shows the way that you can segment and use different levels of the criteria. So if you're just starting out on your Baldridge journey, maybe just answering the top bold question, how do you develop your strategy? That might be a lot of learning. If you're an uh, organization that's further down the journey, you may dive deeper into some of the sub areas and again, further explore and identify opportunities for improvement. So we'd like to ask you to, again, log on to Mentimeter, uh, menti.com, and using that code, 467639. What questions do you have about the Baldrige Healthcare Criteria? So again, feel free to log on to menti.com and using that code, 467639. What questions do you have about the Baldrige Healthcare Criteria? We've got a couple of questions already. First one is, how can we ensure we involve all employees in the Baldrige planning process? What are your best practices? So I think that's key to any organization is making sure that you're getting involved. And part of this process is you wanted to start out small to really figure out, to make sure that your leadership is bought into the process. If you don't have leadership buy-in, then you really are not gonna go anywhere. I think that's key to anything. And then from there, you identify identify key stakeholders across the organization that are what we call champions that can help spread the word and share the knowledge about where, we, where you're going as an organization through this Baldrige process. Another example I think of is our quality management courses themselves. Um, mm. Employees are encouraged. We have a, a one session that's completely dedicated to the Baldrige framework um, and employees are encouraged to attend that training. It's open to all of employees. Great. Yeah, the other thing I would add is that when we when we go through the application process for the feedback report is we actually have employees that lead those each of those categories. Hmm. So our executive um, leadership is the sponsor, but it's actually our employees that are leading that leading those uh, categories. Great. We're getting some more great questions. Um, how long did it take your organization to complete the application questions? 
um, that was a journey in itself. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. as Janet shared, there's 350 plus questions as part of this process. And I will share with you later on in this presentation kind of our journey throughout the last um, years of that application process. But it takes a while. And it, we made it incorporated as part of our strategic planning process. Okay. And to anchor that in the application process, for organizations that are planning on applying, there is some timelines around that. So you mm -hmm. would have to apply in May. Usually it's around May um, of each year that the application okay. process opens. Okay. Um, again, we're getting, getting a lot of great questions. How did you decide to start using it? Um, actually, our Vice President of Organizational Development and Innovation actually took the charge on that. She was actually attending a conference, I believe, in a Baldridge conference, and felt that this was aligned with our, our NUCA system of care. And as Janet mentioned earlier, it's a series of questions. It doesn't tell you how to do things. It, tells, it asks you, what are you doing? And it doesn't put you into a box. It doesn't you know, say you have to do it this way. It just verifies um, through questions about what is your process and making sure that it's spread throughout the organization. Okay, great. Uh, who was involved in the beginning of your, at your organization? Um, as I mentioned, um, our vice president uh, was very involved of organizational development innovation who then got our president, CEO, and the board on, involved. Okay. So really started with leadership, mm -hmm. got yeah, on board? Yeah, definitely. Um, if we want to start the process for applying, where is the best place to start? Yeah. Uh, so online, there's several tools that will help. Um, even just reading through the criteria or the Baldrige Excellence Builder, just becoming familiar with the language and the structure is one place to start. Uh, there's additional assessments online. How are we doing? It's the assessment for leadership and employees as well. They can take that and maybe help identify some areas you want to focus on. Another thing to think about is uh, your state may have a local Baldridge uh, organization, so there might be some resources in your neck of the woods that you could tap into as well. Great, great. And we have one other question out there. How early do you start planning for your Baldrich application? Very early. Like now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, we just submitted our application in April um, um, for, this new, for this new year. Okay. And as I said, we made it part of our strategic planning process. So we, we actually started in October, yes. November, at the beginning of our, of our fiscal year. And again, it's part of our annual process that we continue to update the application just to make sure um, that we're doing what we're doing, doing what we say we're doing, I should say. Okay. And I think it's also dependent on the organization. So um, understanding where your organization is um, and how you're feeling about your application um, might also dictate the time. All right. And one more question here. How do we get a Baldrige site visit? What happens during a site visit? Well, you actually have to complete the process. <laughs> you actually have to complete the application process and fill out the questions and submit it in um, April, springtime. And then the there is a team of um, examiners that review it to make sure that they're finding the Adley and the Let's See um, elements throughout your application. And then if, and that's a May through August time frame. And then if throughout that process they determine that a site visit is um, needed, then they, that will happen usually in the fall time. Um, that's around September or October. Okay. And then I was just going to add that all organizations that submit an application still receive the feedback report, which um, can be extremely enlightening. Yeah. Okay. And then what happens during the site visit is that there's a series of people that come out, uh, usually led by a senior team, se senior team leader, and they will, just like with other um, site visits, come and ask questions, ensure that you're doing what you say you're doing, and do some, maybe some interviews with some folks. Okay. Great. Some great questions, some fantastic answers. Thank you for everybody. So we're going to move on to the next section of our presentation. So I'm gonna share with you the evaluation process criteria called ADLI, and uh, Janet mentioned this earlier. Um, it covers the Baldrige framework categories one through six. And this focuses again on your approach, your deployment, your learning, and your integration of what you say you're doing across your organization. So in approaches, what they're looking for is, is it systematic? Is it repeatable? Is your use of data to enable your learning? So what, in our, for us as, as an organization, we always often look at 
our approaches through our improvement staff. So um, organizational development and again, aligning with our mission and vision as we stated before. When, when you're looking at deployment, they're looking at how do you summarize your approaches in different parts of an organization. So for us, for us at South Central Foundation, we have six uh, vice presidents and areas of the organization that we have to assure that are aligned across. And so when we look at how do we improve processes across the organization, if we were to start something in medical services, we have to identify, does it affect behavioral health? Does it affect our finance, our revenue? Does it affect our dental department, which is in another division? And so we have to ensure that everything is going to be spread out across the organization. Another way to think about it is if it doesn't affect that area, is if it affects one division itself. So one thing that we do is in primary care is we want to streamline our processes and make sure that it's the same no matter where you go. So we have a campus here in Anchorage. We also have another campus in the Valley. And then we have 55 villages that we serve in the state of Alaska. And 12 of those villages, we actually have direct management and oversight. So what we do here in Anchorage, we want to make sure that those systems are the same in the Valley or in our rural village areas. So when we think about learning, we need to have an evaluation process and improvement cycles in organizational learning. As I said before, we want to make sure that things are aligned. And so for us at South Central Foundation, we use the model for, for improvement. And what you see in front of you is what we call our PDSA cycles. And PDSA stands for Plan, Do, Study, and Act. And what we may do is may do little small tests of change, which you see there um, on the screen, but we also may do big tests of change. And it depends on what we're trying to do in the organization. Um, a small test of change may be a day or a week. A big test of change may take a month or two months. It depends on what we are trying to um, change um, in our organization. And then integration, again, as I said, they're aligned. Um, our mission, our vision, our corporate goals, and our operational principles, it has to be aligned with those three, three things. As I mentioned early on, if it's not aligned, then we have to question ourselves, what are we, what are we doing? So, Janet, can you share with us where SCF uses Adly in the organization? Yeah, one example that's coming to mind is the customer owner survey process. Um, there was a process in place. They had an approach. Uh, the approach was a manual paper system, though, and uh, th they weren't getting a lot of responses back. So they took a look at that approach and decided to change and use an iPad survey. So it would decrease the amount of manual entries. Um, and what they also found was it engaged customer owners differently and they had a better response rate. So to deploy that, they trialed that at a annual gathering. It's an annual event that South Central Foundation hosts. Our customer owners get to come in and learn about health services mm -hmm. and what's new at South Central Foundation. They actually tried that survey out and they found uh, it was a, they had a good response. So from that, they learned it was time to deploy it. So deploying it further into the organization, small scale, starting with one primary care clinic, rolling it out to multiple clinics, and then finally rolling it out to all locations when, within South Central that our customer owners receive services. Uh, to link back in learning, the data is studied. It's, there's a customer experience uh, committee that reviews that information, that data, and that informs future changes to our system. And then lastly, integration. Um, as Melanie had mentioned earlier, the system was designed around the customer owner, and we bring that back to our, um, our vision, our mission, our corporate goals and initiatives, and, and really when we're finding those changes to try, it's really checking back in on those principles and ensuring the things that we're recommending um, is going to help us achieve those things. Great. Thank you. So we want to ask you again to share with us and share with the rest of the participants, what experience do you have with Adley? or a similar evaluation process. Again, if you can go to menti.com and use that code 467639. What experience do you have with Adley or a similar evaluation process? Somebody says they don't have any experience with that yet. That's okay. That's okay. Now you know of a tool that would be really useful to use. And I think that just if I could piggyback on Mel something, you were talking, you were talking about how we use the PDSA mm -hmm. um, as to kind of to build on for that. Um, that's one of the things that in my time working here at SCF has been a, 
a constant, regardless of where I've worked, that is a really useful tool to help um, get to like those short term, like, is this working? Is this not working? Really helpful. Yeah, it is very helpful and it's easy. I think yeah. that's, the, oh, that's it's, the thing is it's easy and simple for people to remember. Yeah. We, we sometimes joke about it because we use it so much, but it, <laughs> it, it's really a fantastic tool. Okay, somebody says they use the PDSA cycle with my team to do triads. That's great. great. Sometimes you, yeah, you want to just see if a, if a simple change, um, it, when implemented, is going to be beneficial or not for your for your team or, or for your organization. And, and you have to try it to find that out. That's mm -hmm. great. Let's see if we get any more responses here. Maybe while we're waiting for other responses, I can ask our uh, presenters. Are there other evaluation processes that, that are that are comparable to Adley that other organizations might be familiar with? Hmm. That you can think of off the top of your head. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm kind of thinking because there's there's a, the Shingo model. It's actually a lean mm -hmm. tool set, um, so it's, okay. it's a little different um, approach, but okay. um, it still provides um, a set of criteria by which you would evaluate your organization. Mm -hmm. So I think anytime you have a set of standards or um, a criteria that you're assessing your current performance to a standard, I think that that is in of itself is an evaluation. So some organizations might be evaluating themselves, but just maybe not knowing that. Right. That tangible, yeah. formal word for it. Right, right. Maybe. We've gotten some more responses. One person says, we do not use any of the improvement tools at this time, but hope management can see how important it is soon. Um, my team uses something similar to PDSA, but we never had a name for it. It was normally just a whiteboard for tracking changes over yeah. time. You know, sometimes we have these processes, just as Janet was saying, and we don't necessarily have a name for them. Um, we have a somewhat similar plan, test, review cycle, not entirely standardized yet. So it sounds like there are folks that are have, have some variation on this. They may not have a, a name for it. Um, I found that with whether it's with PDSA or with Adley, having a name for it where you can identify the different um, parts of the process can be really helpful. And I think it's great that you actually have a start. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Absolutely. We didn't get here overnight. This yeah. is a process for us as well. We've got another response. Struggled to stay connected throughout organization. Need everything to go back to our mission. Yes. Okay, yeah. I think that's key. If you're not living your mission and vision, then what are you striving for? I think yeah. you need to know where you're going. Yeah. And the Baldridge application process, the review process, it really is looking for that system and that connection throughout all of the categories. So even though the criteria is segmented into categories, they really are looking for that whole cohesive response and they can see um, the, the fabric of the organization reflected throughout those categories and ultimately rolling up to the mission and vision. That's great. Some great um, feedback from, from our participants who really, again, appreciate that going to continue with our presentation. Yes, thanks Gil. Mm -hmm. So category seven mentioned is all about results and there is a subset of each, there's a subset of, for each of the following outcomes in category seven. So there's healthcare and process outcomes. Here at South Central Foundation we focus a lot on our HEDIS measures which is the health mm -hmm. effectiveness data information set and really that's helping to compare us to top performing healthcare organizations. Um, so really setting the bar high. For customer focused outcomes, we do have a customer survey as we just shared earlier. Mm -hmm. For our workforce, we do an annual employee survey to understand and determine how we're doing in the workforce. Leadership and governance, our board is in audited internally and externally to ensure we're, they're leading our organization where we want to be. And then financial and market outcome measures, uh, things such as return on investment or uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. So as Mel just shared with us Adley, there is a tool to help us evaluate our results. And that goes by the acronym LETC. So LE is for levels, performance levels. Can we see how the organization is performing and use a meaningful measurement scale? Is the performance trending over time? Are things going up, going down, getting better, get, getting worse? Uh, comparisons, how do we compare and are we doing good in the, in the uh, industry? Uh, are we comparing ourselves internally to other parts of our organization? Are we comparing ourselves externally? 
And then integration. So how is that data telling us a story? Are we getting closer to meeting mission and, mission and vision? Um, and what are we doing with it? Uh, a tangible example, I believe, from a Baldridge feedback was that we collected a lot of data, mm -hmm. but may not have been using that data. So trying to be more actionable around our data. Yeah. All right, so let's give Let's See a try. So here's a graph from uh, South Central Foundation. Uh, this is the Diabetes Care Annual HbA1c. And this is the percentage of customer owners that are screened on an annual basis. So if I'm looking for levels, I can see that there is levels here. So we're gauging our performance on a percentage scale. Um, at South Central Foundation, I love it. We're always looking for opportunities for improvements, our OFIs. So one opportunity for improvement here might be to change percentage mm. to percentage screen, screened, yeah. just to give us a little more information context. So the next is T for trends and we can see trending in this graph. Over the last three years, the trend has been down. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, we would like to see this going up. So we might add a, a trend arrow, or a, an arrow that indicates which direction we'd like to see the performance go. The other thing is we might look at trending on a smaller scale. So instead of annually, maybe we break this down monthly so we can better see why this process is changing. So comparisons is the green line, and you'll see that we have the 2015 HEDIS 90th percentile measure on here. Um, and the other thing I appreciate about the South Central Foundation is I believe that used to be the 75th percentile, yeah. and they were nailing it, hitting it out of the park, and so they raised the bar. And so that's that continuous journey of always improving. And then lastly, integration. So the data is integrated into uh, our organization. This is one of the key health concerns of our population, and so it's something that we track and work towards every year. So now that we've shared a little bit about the Baldridge framework, Mel, would you share a little more about South Central's journey? Sure, thanks. So as I mentioned earlier, we actually started this journey back in 2003, and it was an internal um, discussion, basically. We had a couple Baldridge examiner uh, consultants that came and met with about 10 to 12 employees plus our uh, executive leadership. And we reviewed the application that our VP, as I mentioned, of organizational development and innovation actually completed around our organiz organization profile and what we do as an organization. And it was very enlightening in that we had a couple of us kind of look at each other like, do we really do this? <laughs> or do, or do you do that? I don't do that. Um, so it was, it was very eye-opening to not only us as employees but to our leadership that we really had opportunities for improvement to work on definitely our communication and spreading of things that we do across the organization. So when we started this journey, it was just about getting that feedback and getting that report to say, how are we doing as an organization? We have improvement staff that are helping us identify opportunities for improvement, but sometimes it's always good to get that outside perspective. So we continued that process for many years and actually in 2007 we actually received our first site visit which was very exciting we had um, lots of ex um, excitement across the organization and people wondering what's going to happen are we going to get the award or not because it wasn't our expectation it was more about the feedback um, unfortunately we did not receive it at that time but in 2009 we actually applied for a local um, a, a, a local agency called the alaska performance excellence program uh, recognition program and that's Apex, and that was a, a mini Baldridge program, as Janet kind of said, checking with your local agencies or state agencies um, about maybe a program that they may have. And we actually applied for that here in 2009 and actually received the award. So that was um, great recognition as well. And then in 2011, 2011 was a big year for South Central Foundation. And what happened in October of 2011? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> We had our EHR go live in October of 2011. We got a call from Baldridge saying they want to come and do a site visit, so they came on board. And then we had an unannounced Jake Joint Commission visit that came all in the same month, and actually um, almost weeks apart, maybe even sometimes at the same week. Um, in 2011, lots going on, and I'm happy to report out that we actually passed with flying colors in all three areas. So we received the Baldridge Award, we passed, passed the Baldridge site visit, we passed our joint commission, and we received a Project Excellence Award from our Cerner EHR uh, vendor for that year. So great things happened. Yeah, Mel, I was working in primary care 
at the time when all that was happening. And it was, it was a crazy month. I can certainly attest to that, but it went really well. It went very well. Really, really well. <laughs> it was exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. Yes. Exciting is the right <laughs> word. Yes. <laughs> So with that, in 2011, we were the 15th healthcare organization in the U.S. to receive that award. As Janet mentioned, the sector of healthcare didn't come back, come into play until 1999. So we were the 15th health organization to receive that award. We were the first tribal organization in the U.S. to receive the award, and Alaska's first healthcare organization. We have a couple other healthcare organizations in our state, but we were the first one in the state to receive that award. And in 2015, our president and CEO, Catherine Gottlieb, was a third recipient of the Harry S. Hertz Leadership Award. So as we mentioned throughout this process, this is a journey and it's a continuous improvement in the process. It's a, not a one-time thing. As I said, we started this process out as just a feedback. We wanted feedback on how we were doing. That was our goal, just to get that outside perspective of how we can be better aligned as an organization and how we can do things um, better in communication, I think, um, was a, a key thing in, in, in any organization. Communication is an area for improvement. And so how we did that was through our functional committee structure. So we did PDSAs through our leadership support. We went through training. We make sure the people that are aligned with our strategic planning process. And then we created, created a functional committee structure around operations, process improvement, quality improvement, and quality assurance. And that's where a lot of our discussions and decision makings are being held that are led by actually our workforce. Mm -hmm. our, our leadership has empowered those functional committees to actually make decisions and spread change throughout the organization. So I think that was a key thing, um, key change in our journey throughout this process. And again, as we said, we made it, made it part of our strategic planning cycle. So our organization runs on a fiscal year of October through September. And so right now we are in the in June. It's actually June 1st. Can you believe it? Oh, crazy. No. Time flies. So we are in the process of May, June, where we are going into our budget cycle for fiscal year 18. And so we have to look at where we at as an organization. What are we doing? What are our opportunities for improvement? What are the things, do we have the budget to work on those? Or do we have the resources to work on those? What can we do now versus in the future? And that's all part of our discussions at every level of the organization, not only in the leadership, functional community structures, but at the department level. Everybody's are putting, putting together their annual plans um, and what we are going to do as an organization. So we shared with you the process, we shared with you our journey, and I wanna share a little bit with you come about some of our feedback that we received um, in regards to our strengths and opportunities for, for improvement. As I said, showed, just showed you, our strategic planning process was a huge strength for us as an organization because it ensures that we are all aligned and speaking the same language um, and that we know that Gil's doing his annual plan this year in May and so is Janet and not in, at different times of the year. Um, another thing is cultural reinforcement. As I mentioned early on, customer ownership and data-driven is what we drive to do here at South Central, South Central Foundation. And we keep the customer owner in mind and they are always the, 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 health, um, the point of focus for our healthcare system. Our, as I just mentioned as well, our functional committee structure, I think that has helped tremendously over the years with our communication and how do we effectively communicate across the organization. As I mentioned, there is our workforce actually lead this, but we ensure that there are representatives from each of our divisions um, or departments, depending on the, the committee and their focus, but everybody has a voice from across the organization. Now, everything's not perfect at South Central Foundation or at perfect in the world, but we do have opportunities for improvement. And one of those areas is comparative data. And Janet hit on this a little bit with the Let's See in that we do use HEDIS for our medical, medical measures, right? But we don't have any comparison data or we don't have a HEDIS type comparison program where we can do that for our behavioral health. Our behavioral health programs, um, and this is not just only for us as an organization, but my understanding this is an issue for the nation. Uh, um, how are we doing around behavioral health data and what, how do we know that we're doing the right thing um, for our customers, right? 
Um, so we need to be better about that. And then succession planning. So we have succession planning in for how do we get our admin staff up to the program coordinator level? Or how do we get them to that next level above management um, or down improvement? You know, that's always an option. Um, but the next step is how do I get the management, the, uh, the middle management up to that higher level? And we have actually started doing something here at South Central Foundation in regards to that, uh, what we call the executive leadership experience or an, uh, another acronym to throw out there, the LE program. Um, and that's an opportunity for uh, senior leaders and potential leaders in the organization, uh, across the organization, to spend time with our executive leadership um, for a, a year, about a year. And it's a, um, get, we get the opportunity to shadow our, each of our vice presidents for about a week and get to um, see how they operate their divisions, attend meetings, how do they work with their staff, how do they work with our external partners. And then we also get to spend about a month with our president, CEO, and learn from her um, the keys to success. You know, how, do, how are we operating as an organization? How does she get to work with our board? Um, and those type of things. Is there anything you want to add there, Jen? Uh, one thing I was just thinking through was um, how ingrained the Baldridge uh, criteria is even in years that South Central Foundation is not applying for the award. So I think it's it's interesting that they mm -hmm. still update that process or use that process to um, evaluate internally and that information gets developed and included in the annual strategic planning. Yeah. So it's an ongoing effort and it's cyclical. Yes. Any, any other things? That I can think of. So we want to hear from you one more time. We ask you, we invite you to participate in a survey uh, to let us know, uh, give us feedback about this webinar. What did we do well? What are some things that are opportunities for improvement? <laughs> Again, we're always asking that question. Um, you can find this, sur this uh, survey at www.surveymonkey.com slash r slash Baldridge webinar. Again, that's www.surveymonkey.com slash r slash Baldridge webinar. And if there are other questions you have or other information you'd like to find out, I invite you to visit our website, which can be found at www.scfnuka.com. That's www.scfnuka.com. If you have any other questions at this moment, you can certainly use the Q&A function in Mediasite to send those to me and we'll try to respond to you, um, either while we're still on the air or offline. But at this time, we want to thank you. For, if we want to thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate the time that you took to spend with us so we could share with you about our journey on um, with Baldrige and the Baldrige criteria and so that we could give you some more information about the NUCA system of care here at the South Sundor Foundation. Again, thanks. Until next time, take care. Thank you.